Hello, and thank you for watching. My name is Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano, and this is video number three of a three-part series on Chopin's Nocturne in C-sharp minor. In this video, it is my goal to give you more confidence with the four scales at the end of this piece. In my score, the first scale happens in measure 55. So I'm just gonna go through all the scales one by one and give you some tips. So the first thing to know is there's lots of ways to play this part of the piece. So I'd like to just go over some of those choices and then you can get it under your fingers and do your best. So the first thing to note is that all of the scales are taking place over two beats, all right? So the left hand, one and two and three, by the way, the left hand is the same for all four of them, C sharp, F sharp, D sharp, C sharp. So all black keys for that one. Before we go through each scale, I wanna give you two overall tips. Tip number one is try to adjust your thinking about the rhythm from four beats per measure to two big beats per measure. So instead of thinking one and two and three, and four and think one and two and the speed doesn't change just the feel of the flow because then the scale itself will be in a beat and you don't have to worry about where does beat four fit in tip number two has to do with finger technique and so if you've watched some of my other videos, you know I talk about the finger pad, the whole portion of the finger, and how we use different parts of the finger pad to get different results. For example, in the measure where the first scale is, I'm gonna play that first C sharp with my whole finger pad to get a nice tone, almost flat actually, instead of on the tips. I don't have as much control if I play on the tips for that tone. Now, for the scales, you want to play on the tip portion of the finger and you find the correct portion of the finger by doing what I call standing up on the keys. So you start kind of flat and then you just roll up your finger till you find where it's gripping but not slipping. Okay, so if I roll it up right about here. So I have a nice firm first knuckle and I'm going to play on the top portion of my finger pad, about the top 30%. You want to work that in nice and slowly. On the tips there. So now let's get to the scales themselves. So for each scale, we're going to go over the fingering and then a few practice techniques and then talk about some of the discrepancies in the additions. The first one, the fingering, you can either start on two or three. But then after that first note, it's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Cross with three, cross with four. Memorize that, get it in your tips. If I'm practicing scales like this, I like to split it up into all sorts of subdivisions. So I might do short, long, short, long. I might do long, short, long, short, long, short, long. Short, I might do long, triple it long, triple it long, triple it long, triple it long, or the reverse of that, triple it long. Even though that's not how the rhythm will go, it gets your fingers moving really quickly. Now, if you look up above, you'll see two different versions of this. Version one has a little bit more instruction, piano, and then PP, egalamente, so equal. Okay, and version number two starts the scale itself, piano. And then it has all these staccati. I usually interpret those staccati under a slur when you have the pedal down is more just like touching the tops of the keys. So remember how we were talking about playing on the tips? So without the pedal, it sounds like this. With the pedal, it sounds like this. Oh, 
okay? When you're playing the sparkly staccati, your wrist needs to be up high. So now, fitting the hands together. So you might have noticed in the video on rhythm, I did spend a fair amount of time going over the two against threes. giving you steps to get those exactly right in terms of the rhythm. We also covered five against two and four against three in that video. With these four scales at the end, it's not as feasible to get them exactly mathematically correct. But that said, I do think it's valuable to pound it out a couple of times and feel where right, left, right, or where it's together. Together, right, 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 left, right, 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 right together, right, 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 left, right, 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 together. Then from that point, we know that the B is coming together. So what I like to do is I like to mix up the nine notes leading up to that B in groups of four and five. So I like to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five together. to do the reverse so five then four one two three four five one two three four one and by doing this what are we doing we're getting more or less how many notes are going to be going with each left hand note all right and then we do the same going down we'll do one two three four one two three four five together five on the first one. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one. Okay. And then we go through the whole thing. Four, five, four, five. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one. Then do the opposite. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one. And then after I've done the four plus five and the five plus four, then I spend a little bit of time fitting in that F sharp in between the A and B, like this. And then I go all the way up and back down to the other B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, stop. It takes a lot of times to kind of get in the zone. And then we do the same going down. Right when you have the crossover, the left hand will come in between. So together. Okay. So after we've gone up and down, then you know how I was talking earlier about the big beat. This is our big beat. That's your two and. So we've got one, two, one. Do you see what I'm saying? Then one, all right, let's move on to scale number two. This is the scale I like to say, just do your best because <laughs> If we actually do the math on this one, the common denominator is 140. So that means the left hand note comes every 8.75 right hand notes. Fitting that together is pretty challenging. So first item of business is to get this scale under your fingers. Know how high it goes with that 8 VA in the middle. So we're going to start on A. Same fingering, crossing on 4. And 3 on G sharp. 3. So we're going from here to here. So just know that. How many crossovers do we have? One, two, three, four, and then no crossover. Okay. So how do we get this scale quick? You can practice it in rhythms, like I showed you before. And then on this one, I like to take it in chunks wherever the crossover is and play it really fast. See if I can get it. And then do the next one. The thumb has to go. As soon as it plays, it has to go under the, the tunnel, as I call it with my younger students. Get that thumb under the tunnel. And then you add another one. And then you add another one. 
and then you add the final one. Okay, so lots of that. And then you do the same coming down. Want to get the crossover so we know that this is a three crossover. And then. And so forth. So each little chunk of that scale, when it is right, you're going to feel like if you know what dominoes are, that game where you stack up all those tiles and you press it, you're going to feel like you just press the dominoes and they go. The other thing I want to mention is it's okay to lean over a little bit to the right as you're approaching that top. Lean over. Try to get that scale as fast as you can. And this might be as fast as you can do it today, okay? Totally appropriate. Play it how fast you can play it expressively and cleanly. And as you get more experience, it will get faster. All right, so then how are we going to fit the notes together? So let's look at my little chart here. This is the 35 subdivision. So. What I like to do is just take it in groups again. For practice, we're gonna start and end together. So the first time, let's play the left hand together with the A. A little faster. 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 Okay, now let's do the same thing and let's play it together with the B. Let's see. A to C sharp, okay? A to C sharp. Faster. Okay, now let's do A to D sharp, okay? Slow. start on C sharp and we're going to play C sharp with the D sharp and we're going to stop on C sharp so okay now let's start on D sharp C sharp here and we'll go down to B and start slowly kind of practice and then with this one you just do your best because sometimes no matter how much you try to get the notes in between each other you might play this together the tops in fact you'll hear tons of famous artists play that d sharp together so just do your best one of the additions there is a accent at the beginning i like doing that accent because i think it gets me set so in terms of pacing i already mentioned you could play it quite slowly if that's where you're at many pianists like to take the first one in tempo and then really you might hear not so common to hear that more common to hear time on the way up and then fast on the way down you might hear that so it's kind of slow or you might hear the whole scale what i would call fat so see how confident you can get with the right hand scale and then make your choice about pacing there's a lot of flexibility with the pacing there okay now we're on our third one our third one is a 11 note scale and a four note left hand again if you look on my breakdown here 
to get a common denominator, we would have to split it into 44 subdivisions. Let's go over the fingering first. So the fingering for this third one, just stay consistent. When you get to D sharp, come underneath, all right? So we're only going up to two here. So one, two, three, four, one, two, one. I think it's valuable to go over where the left hand fits in with this one. So even though I don't want you counting to 44, together, right, right, left, right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right, right, together. Let's do that one more time. Together, right, right, left, right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right, right, together. I think with this one, it's valuable to do different versions of threes and twos. Let's do two, then three, three, three. So two, three, 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 together. Now let's do three, two, three, three. Three, two, three, three, together. Let's do three, three, two, three. Three, three, two, three. And then let's do three, 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 two. Three, three, two. Now let's just play the right hand up and down. Let's play the left hand. Then we can do like we did with the 18th and feel that that F sharp come in before the D sharp. After the F sharp. Let's put those together. Okay, and then let's do E, D sharp, C sharp, B. One, four, three, two. The left hand C sharp is going to technically come right after the C sharp. train your right hand to be doing one thing while the left hand is doing something totally differently. <laughs> the thing that can be frustrating is sometimes the music is lined up wrong. Like if you look at my subdivision chart, you'll see the left hand D sharp comes after the F sharp, mathematically speaking. So in version one, it's correct. It's after the F sharp, but in version two, it comes in between the E and F sharp going up, but that's not really correct. In terms of technique, I'm putting all of these in the same motion. And then I give a little down to this, then top to the keys. Okay. People play that even or they take time. You'll hear people play like this. Again, how does this piece make you feel? What emotion are you trying to convey? All right, we're on the last one. So now we got 13 against four. So our mathematical subdivision for this one would be 52. We are not gonna go through and count to 52, but just know it can be crazy. All right, it's almost exactly the same as the one before. It just goes up one higher. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So we're getting that. So some versions will have it smooth. Some versions have smooth. Then at the turnaround, the staccati under the slur. Okay. Um, tons of people will just play that G sharp with the D sharp. So they'll play like a group of six. almost like three, 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 four. You'll hear that all the time. Some versions will have a rollentondo starting at the end of that. Be aware that there are a lot of different versions and 
practice and play the one that you like. Okay, let's fit the notes in mathematically, just so you know exactly where they go. We have together, right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right, 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 together. Let's do that again. Together, right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right, right, right. Okay, then fitting them in one at a time, we're just gonna, we're gonna get up to the E, so right at the crossover, after the D sharp is the first left hand note. What we're doing is getting in the muscle memory. Okay, now let's go. We'll do one, two, three, two, and put the D sharp after the G sharp. one I also like to practice in groups so 13 we're gonna have three groups of three one group of four so let's try it four three 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 one two three four one two three one two three one two three one now let's do three four three three one two three one two three four one two three one two three one now let's do three three four three one two three one two three one two three four one two three one now let's do three 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 four you'll hear that one a lot that actual subdivision three 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 four So the final step, building in the muscle memory. See if you can split your brain into right hand and left hand, and let's just try that. Right, left, right, left, together. to take a little bit of time. So you maybe don't play that one together. So slow, slow, slow. You'll hear it like that. So those are the four scales at the end. I hope that helped you. I'm gonna just play it through now, all four of them. That was my best one. Just know it might not ever happen that you get all four in a row exactly how you wanted it. And I'm not perfectly happy with it, but you get the idea. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful and I hope you will subscribe to my channel. If you found it especially helpful, please send me a donation on PayPal. The instructions are in the description. And as always, if you've gotten this far and you want to let me know where you're from, please write that in the comments. I love hearing from people all over the world. Thank you for watching.